and we'll we'll talk about it. Just not the way it's obviously been going on because it wasn't successful and they're shutting down now. And unfortunately, as many as well now people are saying 786 employees were listed uh, on LinkedIn uh, as working at Convoy. So we don't know how many people. It's I saw estimates of 500, but at least 500 people have lost their jobs effective today with no severance or any any sort of benefits or anything like that besides cobra benefits which to me is just really weird right because this company generated so much revenue so apparently just in case you didn't catch the, you know the news in the logistics industry over the past 48 hours uh convoy two days ago pulled all their freight from the market pulled it off load boards pulled it all off uh their their app and basically Nobody knew what was going on. Everyone kind of speculated. A lot of people were speculating bankruptcy. There wasn't a lot of uh, signs that Convoy was going bad, at least that I've seen. It seems to have caught a lot of people you know, off guard, at least on social media. <clears throat> a lot of people seem to be surprised at the fact that Convoy is shutting down, um, which is, is weird. And uh, because... The only people that kind of forecasted that something like this could happen are like, you know, the Craig Fullers of the world, right? So people that pay attention to data and they see data in ways that I'll never be able to understand it. But that's, you know, Craig Fuller actually tweeted out. And I said this the other day. I said either Craig Fuller knows something or everybody should go buy Sonar. It was like probably the best promotion ever for that company because he tweeted out that freight brokerages, some of these mega brokers, are gonna, they're going under. I mean, they're going to happen. And Convoy is not going to be the last one. Certainly not. Um, he tweeted that out. And then within you know half a day, news of Convoy spread like wildfire. Now, I don't know. I don't want to say like he's stoking the fire and instilling fear in the world or whatever. But then Fuller yesterday, I believe it was, said he is waiting on confirmation of a yet another big freight, match, freight matching freight tech platform that may or may not be on their deathbed as well when it comes to like surviving. I don't know whether or not th that is true because we haven't seen anything. And I don't think Freight Waves typically sits on a story that's gonna get clicks on their website. Now, I, you know, so who knows what's gonna happen with it? Hopefully nothing. Maybe they found f financing at the last point and there's no story there. I think likely we're gonna see a lot of these other companies uh, going under. You know, Freight Waves or uh, uh, Convoy is is a huge company. And there's a lot of things I don't understand in terms of, like, I, I'll be honest, I know nothing about VC funding. I don't know. That's when venture capitalists come in and they inject all this money. I knew that was going to happen. Um, okay, that was the wrong number. Um, but uh, where venture capital comes in and uh, they, they invest all this money in some sort of technology, like venture capital uh was invested to the tune of like 500 million dollars in convoy how they spent that money that's something i don't know if i'm ever going to understand like i can't imagine being able to spend that that amount of money and then losing it and not becoming profitable that's it that's the thing with with convoys i don't believe they are profitable at all i heard one um one aspect or that or one way of thinking about this that i never did when i was in a meeting earlier today for my job uh, you, I was talking to, uh, you know, one of the executives and, and he was saying that he believes that the way Convoy got the majority of their business was basically taking losses on all the loads to going out to shippers and saying, oh, so-and-so is charging this, we'll charge you less than that. And then taking a loss when they booked it with the carrier. I don't know whether that's true. I haven't booked a lot of freight, uh, from Convoy. Uh, so I don't know if the loads were good or the rates were bad or anything like that. Um, but I still don't understand. I mean, you would have to take huge losses to amount to, to amount to that kind of loss. They had a valuation of three point eight billion dollars. Like that's a huge company. And if more companies go under, what is that going to do for the freight industry? For individual guys like me, small freight brokers or small brokers under the tune of twenty five billion, that's great for us, right? Because some of those shippers may enter the market again. Maybe rates will suffer some sort of equilibrium. You know, a lot of carriers are attributing these mega brokers as the reasons why rates are so cheap. I wouldn't necessarily attribute that to the brokers. I'd attribute that to the carriers that are accepting the cheap freight. But again, that's a, an argument we could go on for days and days and days, and everyone's going to have a uh, different opinion about that. But it, it's the whole thing is just really weird. And then, you know, Craig Fuller made his tweet last night where he talked about how, he you know, they have 
he, he has confirmation, or I don't even know if confirmation. He basically said he has he has some idea that there may be another big bankruptcy uh, in using the term imminent, right? So another freight tech company to the tune of 200 or to the tune of 50 million to 250 million uh, was going to go belly up. That bankruptcy is imminent and nobody knows who it is. But that caused a tremendous amount of speculation on social media. So much speculation that a lot of people got scared, right? And so early this morning, uh, one unknown uh, factor that I've never heard of, some block block factor or something like that. I forgot what they're called. They apparently made the decision to turn off freight factoring or the ability to sell your invoice as a small carrier to the factoring company for them to buy and do other receivables. They turned off all, well, I know they turned off flock freight, but apparently there were the CEO on a, on a LinkedIn chat this morning was saying that he was going to turn off a lot of them, pretty much all the ones that are VC backed, which was ironic because it was a VC backed factor saying that they're gonna turn off other VC backed freight brokerages because they're VC backed. <laughs> Which to me, I was like, wow, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Someone said, just tuned in. Have we found out how much Convoy lost? No, I, I don't know how much they lost. Obviously they lost what they, uh, they were generating, but they were also generating at $103 million revenue, revenue, over a billion dollars in freight spend. And with 103, I think it was $103 million in revenue. And I did try to break it down and figure out, okay, well, if you paid all 1,500 employees salaries of $200,000 a year, you would still have a surplus of $100 million. Then you add their revenue of $100 million a year. What the heck were they blowing money on? I mean, that's a lot of losses. If you want to believe what some people believe, that it's because they were just basically taking business at all costs, where they're going out to businesses and saying, Wait, we'll, we'll move your freight, and then taking losses on the load in order to build capacity. It, it's, it's kind of what I was saying yesterday about Uber Freight. Uber Freight kind of did the same thing in order to build capacity. They offered super high detention rates. They offered super high layover rates. They offered, offered super high truck order not used. Once they ended up getting that capacity in there and realizing they already had those numbers, what did they do? They dropped them back down to market rates. Uh, and everybody complained, but you know, Uber's like, ha, ah, we're so big. What are you going to do about it? And what are you going to do about it? And, and nobody, and nobody can do anything. So we're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen with some of these other companies. I wouldn't be surprised if, if we do learn that another one's going out probably tomorrow or something like that. I don't think there would be today. There's too much news going on about Convoy because it's such a huge, uh, business to go under so rapidly. And, and there's no mention of bankruptcy. I don't think that they are going to file for bankruptcy. Um, and I don't think that that's likely the plan from what I've heard and read that they're trying to offload their tech. So they're entertaining, bu entertaining buyers to buy the freight matching you know, system and use it some way. I've heard Walmart, I've heard UPS, I've heard C.H. Robinson, but apparently that deal backed out because C.H. Robinson being a broker, they're also you know, not having the earnings that they need because well, the market sucks right now. And so freight rates are a little bit low and everybody's kind of sitting around going, what the heck are we going to do? So it's kind of interesting. Like I said, you know, some factors are, are shutting off some of these um, uh, some of these freight tech companies preemptively, you know, because they're worried that maybe, you know, so, such and such company may go under. So they're just not going to buy their invoices. You know, if you're a small carrier, even a small to medium sized carrier, and you do work the spot, you work with some of these customers it would behoove you, <laughs> that's a funny word, that's why I say it like that, it would behoove you if you uh, went through your, your accounting and figured out how many outstanding invoices you have from some of these mega brokers. And it may be worth diversifying some of your business. If 20% if of your freight, say you have a 200 truck fleet and you know 20% of your freight is pulling freight from a broker, not necessarily all brokers, but 20% of your freight is is pulling freight from a particular broker, you're not very diversified. If that broker goes out for whatever reason or they suffer, you know, something, uh, you're going to take a massive hit. You know what I mean? And then it becomes this chain reaction. It's kind of what I was saying about the factor. When the factor shuts down uh, or it stops buying invoices for a company, like similar, you know, like what happened this morning with Flock Freight, if a no-name factor shuts down but gets a, bu a bunch of publicity, that factor then shuts down 
uh, it ref- or not doesn't shut down, but refuses to buy any invoices from Flock Freight, then Flock Freight, even though they may be financially healthy, now they're perceived as not healthy because everybody and their brothers shared it out on social media. And now it's causing panic. And so now people are calling Flock Freight. They're not able to get loads moved because they're all over the internet as, as a no buy from some small, you know, mom and pop VC funded, you know, um, freight factor somewhere i don't i've never heard of them so that's why i'm calling them small because they are because i've never heard of them and i've been in this industry for a long time and i've never heard of block whatever it is or something i guess they're one of these vc funded freight tech you know factoring companies but that young ceo got on this morning and he was bragging not bragging but he was yeah he was bragging about his decision to shut off uh, the credit faculty, essentially, where he ref- he's refusing to buy any invoices for Flock Freight. And then he goes on to say something that was really stunning because he said, and we have no reason to believe that Fro- uh, Flock Freight isn't a very successful company. and Or in fact, we know that they're a successful and profitable company. Well, if you know that, then why are you shutting off their funding? Because, you know, they're not affecting Flock Freight in that regard. You know what they're re- affecting? The small carrier that's trying to get that invoice moved. <laughs> that's, that's who they're affecting. Right. And, and I do have a question because Convoy did put out a, pre- or a statement, I, I think, a push notification to their app saying if you're hauling a load for Convoy, don't worry, deliver it as normal. You will get paid right away. There will be no delays to carry your payments. I don't know whether that's true. Again, this is a different scenario than some of the other shutdowns we've seen because there's not a bankruptcy filing. This is not them going bankrupt. This is them deciding they don't have enough costs to operate or they don't have enough cash to operate anymore because they don't have anybody that actually understands the freight business. Here's the thing, guys, like there, there's, I asked a question in that LinkedIn group this morning, and then I started thinking about it after and did my own research a little bit. I started realizing that there is, uh, you can tell which companies are doing very well in the freight tech space by looking at who their owners are and their CEOs and stuff like that. If the CEO comes from, you know, a very heavy logistics background, guess what? They're doing pretty good right now. If they come from like a tech background or they don't have any real like cardinal not like if they've never moved a load themselves and they're working in the freight broker space, they're not the ones that are doing very good right now. So, I mean, if I was a VC like financier or whatever that term is called, if I was the guy doling out the money, I would be like, oh, so you want, you know, 100 million bucks. Okay, let me see your executive staff. How many years of experience do you have in logistics? Well, I don't have any, but I have a degree from blah. Nope, I don't care. How many do you have? How many do you have? How many do you have? I wouldn't loan money to anybody that doesn't know the industry. It's kind of, it's stupid shit. You, I don't even think you could buy truck insurance without having over the road experience. Don't they ask you or a surty bond, right? When you try to buy a surty bond as a freight broker, that's one of the questions they ask. If you don't have a lot of freight broker experience, they charge you more for the surty bond because the risk is increased. I don't, I don't know why so people don't do that because a lot of these big freight tech companies that you hear, you know, Uber Freight was one. I remember when Uber Freight first announced that they were, I mean, I'm aging myself here, but when Uber Freight first announced that they were launching their freight division, I remember they tapped a guy that had no freight background. He's, and I think he's the guy that's still running it. But I remember being like, why aren't they putting someone that actually understands a freight market in it? It's kind of like the FMCSA director, right? But then they have no actual experience, you know, doing anything related to trucking. And you, you wonder why they're not doing a good job. It's very, it's very funny. And we just, we have that weird industry thing now where it seems that a lot of people in the freight brokerage industry don't have enough experience to do it. You know, someone said, where'd you go? I guess it dropped for a minute. Yellow went under and the world is still turning. Yeah, yellow was a different scenario because again, I'm not a big union guy, but the Teamsters shut down yellow. I mean, let's be honest. Let's call it where yellow, granted, the government kept, <clears throat> we as taxpayers kept yellow alive for a long, 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 long time, well beyond when they should. Pretty much anyone that understands the market knows that. We, you know, during the COVID pandemic, we bailed them out to the tune of a couple hundred million dollars of taxpayer dollars. We actually owned, you, me, everyone, we all own 30% of yellow as as taxpayers. I think it was 33% or something like that. That, that all American taxpayers owed because the government owed interest because we you know loaned them money during COVID. 
But the Teamsters essentially shut him down because Yellow was trying to modernize, which they have to do in order to keep up with the current trends and current, you know, marketplace. And uh, the Teamsters weren't having it. They're like, nope, you got to pay us more money and we're get, we want to do less work, essentially. I mean, I paraphrase there. Uh, and Yellow said, no, we can't do that. And then they went back and forth for about nine months. And I say they went back and forth. Yellow was like, please sit down with us. And uh, Sean O'Brien with the Teamsters was like, no. <laughs> and, and then Yellow shut down. You know, because the Teamsters refused to sit down and try to negotiate. You know, and I'm back now, but I don't know why it drops the drops the connection. Only when I'm live streaming. It doesn't do it any other time. You know, it only drops the internet when I'm live streaming. No other time all day. I could be watching videos all day and it never, never happens. So uh, usually what I try to do is I have landline internet and then Wi-Fi. I forget to turn on the Wi-Fi today, so it's my fault. Um, <clears throat> so it said, there's a yellow yard around the block from my home. Good trucks and trailers been sitting there for months. Wonder if I could buy one cheap. I don't know. I don't think they're going to auction them. Uh, because I think that they received an offer to buy them or their, their fielding office offers to buy them. But I think the Teamsters are also suing Yellow uh, for not, you know, doing something. I don't know. It's, it's all silly, you know. But it, with, in terms of this convoy stuff, here's, here's something that you could do. <laughs> Diversify. If you're an independent owner op, right, so you have your own authority, you're out there running, or you have, you know, 1, 2, 10, 15, 100 trucks, you got to diversify your clientele. OK, my personal thing is I would, you know, any of these VC funded uh, freight boards and I'm not going to go through the process of naming all of them. I would be cautious until we figure out who because Craig Fuller doesn't typically I mean, he likes to stir the ship, but he doesn't typically just write something about hearing news that one is going belly up and have it not materialize. It usually does happen. So I would be cautious of booking loads with these kind of freight matching platforms. Um until we have some sort of, I mean, Uber obviously safe. They're publicly traded. They're not VC back now. Uh, well, they still are VC back, but they're publicly traded. Uh, you know, the Schneiders, the JB Hunts, the CH Robinson, all those boards. Uh, they, you don't have to worry about those. They're almost like too big to fail, right? Uh, but some of the other ones I'd be a little weary of. I know the Emerge CEO, uh, I forgot what his name is now. He came out and said, uh, you know, this is why. Look at what, how, why Convoy failed, because nobody actually knows why they failed. But he basically said, use that as a map to know what that's not what we're doing here. We're financially strong. We're not closing down. I know there are some uh, rumors about Load Smart or Load Mart or Load Dog or something like that. That CEO came out on, on LinkedIn and said, uh, I don't know why people are throwing us into this VC-backed category because we're not VC-backed. It's all been bootstrapped. So... Uh, it's interesting, and a lot of people are panicking about it, and rightfully so, because if you have a lot of money tied up in these these um, with these big brokers, then you should be worried. I mean, in all reality, you should go out and start door knocking and get your own business. It's so easy to say that. It's a lot harder to actually do it, and I understand that. <clears throat> but hopefully, hopefully people fare fairly well, fairly well, whatever. Uh, but I wanted to make a quick little video and talk to you guys just about this. I don't plan on going live. Today's the day off from doing live streams. So I didn't plan on, on doing a live stream. But I wanted to make a quick little video so you guys could understand. So I, I'm still working. So I have to check every email when it comes in. And there's a lot. Um, Nick said, you've done over a half a million dollars with Convoy. It's a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are affected by it. A lot of people really, really enjoyed working with Convoy. Others did not. So it, it kind of all depends on, on what your preference is. Some people consider them in that, you know, cheap freight category. I'll be honest, I don't think I ever booked a load with Con Convoy. I remember going on onto their platform years ago when it first came out and just being like interested in the whole freight tech side of things. And I still think, you know, if there's a way to take that, the, the job away from the load boards, I think it will be successful. You know, whether I don't believe in reverse bidding auctions or anything else, which is what a lot of people are tending to gravitate towards now. I don't like those. Maybe silent auctions where you don't see what other people are bidding. So you're not bidding against each other. But there's all different things. But yeah, 
that's basically it. I just want to give you a quick update. And I'm sorry I dropped the internet a couple of times. This is what happens when you walk work from rural Virginia. Next week, I'll be in a hotel in Chattanooga uh, because I'll be at the home office working for the week there. Then I'll be back here for a week. And then I, I think uh, <clears throat> the Fre Freight Waves event is the following week, and I'll be there for that. But I'm not sure what... what uh, I don't know if it's two weeks from next week or, or it's three weeks from... I don't remember. But I'll be in Chattanooga for that. I'm essentially in, in Chattanooga every other week. So it's good. But anyway, I will see all of you. Hopefully you have a good uh, Thursday afternoon and evening. And I will see all of you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, for an all-new episode of Freight Broker Live. I'm sure we'll talk all about Convoy. We'll talk about a bunch of stuff. We'll dig deep. All right? We'll see ya.